Hello everyone, it's Jaren with NCSI once again, here as promised in my last video to show you some more information about the new engine-based agent that was enabled by default in Service Update 3. I have in my lab here two lab clients. This one is uh, running Windows 11 and has a legacy agent. And this is running Windows 10 with the new engine-based agent installed. Before we begin uh, talking about how to get this engine-based uh, agent installed, I did want to point out a couple of key differences between the uh, old legacy agent and the new one. Also some differences if you go to SU3. First on the list is services. So used to be in services, you'd come in here, you would find the land desk block of services and it had all of our agent services available. Uh, we have uh, finally been uh, upgraded to the Avanti name, so no longer sporting land desk. Everything is now referred to as the Avanti EPM agent. So one thing to keep in mind there, those same changes carry over into our agent path. So program files x86, no longer land desk LD client. You have some remnant here from my, my old agent, but now Avanti EPM agent and then this folder structure should look familiar to you. One other big change with the file structure is, and I need to turn on hidden items, um, our SDM cache now lives in program data. So that's, uh, I haven't downloaded anything yet, but that's another big thing that, that's occurred. So that is a, a big departure from way th the way things used to be with the naming and the, and the folder structure. Okay, now that we've addressed some of the differences between the legacy and the engine-based agent, let's talk about how to convert existing agents over into the new engine-based agent. So I'm going to go to my agent configuration tool. I'm going to highlight the agent configuration that I wish to install. This is also a new feature. Uh, I believe SU2 is when they started doing this. When you click on a configuration, it lists out the computers that have that configuration. Get a little limited uh, column set here. All right, I'm going to right click and you'll notice the three new entries in our context menu. Create engine based install files, create engine based install MSI, and create self contained engine based agent install MSI. So, what are the differences between these three options? This creates a four files, four or five files in a folder, and you can use this to install the agent on things that have the ability to contact the core server. Uh, either directly or via the CSA. So it has some of the files it needs, but it's going to contact the core server for the rest of them. This is something akin to the advanced agent from the legacy agent days. This will create a small MSI that acts more like a bootstrapper and can be used to uh, kick off an install from like a GPO or something. Uh, this one will, of course, also contact the core server and stream those files down before installing. And then this bottom one is recommended for, uh, not recommended, required for offline installs. If your agents aren't going to be able to contact the core server at that time, um, this will have everything inside of the, the install folder that it needs in order to install it and be functional. So these are things you can do to create agent installers and uh, push them out, um, either through uh, this console using UDD or uh, another, another utility that you might have or GPO or something like that. Okay, those are the options if we wanted to push the agent and have it install as if it were a unmanaged device or to overwrite the existing agent. What if we wanted to use the existing infrastructure, um, the bandwidth settings, the policy capabilities and all of that to upgrade the agents in place instead of doing a full install? We now have under distribution packages, Windows, this engine-based agent install. So this will create a software distribution package that we can use all of our regular tools for preferred servers and uh, the portal and you know uh, all those things. We can use this to push this out and convert agents from legacy to engine-based. So when I click on it here, uh, you'll notice uh, immediately that it's grayed out. I can't change this, it points to the engine-based installer. I'm just going to call this lab agent upgrade 
to EBA. All right, I'm unable to change this, so we'll move to the next option. Uh, this just tells us the core server name, and this is a software distribution package install. Um, I don't think there's any uh, any other switches we can use here, or at least none that I'm aware of. And then additional files, we just have the .0 file from the core server that uh, identifies itself as, as being the core server that this agent trusts. So I'm going to hit save here. And uh, there we go, lab agent upgrade to EBA. I can schedule this like any other scheduled task, and I can deploy it like any other task. Uh, as I was saying before, we can, we can do a policy supported push, we can do a policy, we could do portal, um, query based targeting, you know, all of the features are, are there and, and available to us. So, uh, lab client here is my legacy based agent, and I'm going to move that over here and start the task. Just like every other task is going to go through a discovery phase, it's going to reach out to try and find the machine, and then once it does and verifies the identity of the machine, it will then begin downloading the files and then kick off the installation process. And there we go, completed, done. Woo, all right, I'm done, right? It's, it, it's, it's good, no. Uh, that kicked off the installation Kind of like the advanced agent, it kicked off the installation of the new agent, but the new agent is going to take time to install. And if you were to look over in the files here, um, we would be seeing the uh, EPM agent folder listed in here. Now I did have the Neurons Cloud agent installed. Uh, that's why this file or this folder was existing here. Oh, and there we go. There is our EPM agent folder. And if I drill down into that, you can see the folders are uh, just starting to populate in here. We don't have them all yet, um, but the agent is currently working through that upgrade. So we're going to see it uninstall and remove the old agent, and then we're going to see it um, begin installing this one. In fact, if we were to roll back here, let's see. Yep, the old agent is... Uh, is gone. <laughs> so the new agent is on its way in and we can see the folders popping up. There's our engine store and our agent install cache. So this will continue to populate. The files will, will pop in and, and show up and uh, we'll, we'll go until it's done. So I'll pause the recording for now and then we'll see it. All right, the install is now complete. You can see we have all of our engine folders and everything is here. If we pop back over to the core server and hit refresh, there is my client and there it is running EPM 2022 SU3. Further, if I'd like to know if this was engine based or not, I could uh, open up the inventory by double clicking on it, go into Landes Management and find the engine based uh, or engine state folder. There it is. And inside of here, it will tell you the status of every engine. So AMT install successful, base, common monitor, inventory, so everything's been installed, everything is up to date and good to go. In the future, because this is now engine based, I can right click on it and there will be an option right here. It's not visible because it's at the latest version, uh, but there would be an option to mark for upgrade and the next time a check-in occurred, it would then upgrade itself. We also have this force agent check-in option. This will be done every 24 hours by default. Uh, that is configurable via a registry key if you would like to change that. And that is how you use the new engine-based agent. Uh, there are some further articles, and we'll link those in the description of the video that describe the different install methodologies, um, also uh, different keys that we can turn on in the core server to use this for installation, for example, in provisioning, or uh, for right-clicking and scheduling agent deployment. Uh, but that's it for today. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please uh, like and subscribe to the NCSI channel. Have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you next time.